Every single set that uh, I made in the show had a story behind it. Wow. All of this just for one person? Probably the, the, the set that I'm kind of, um, I'm most, uh, I'm most excited for the fans to see is Kaya's mansion because in the manga you never go into the mansion so nobody really knows what it looks like and not much is known about Kaya but the, what we do know is that her grandparents started the shipyard they started building ships for everybody in the East Blue so that would have been pirates and marines and anybody who came to them so I figured that they would have a kind of sales room so when you first walk into the house in the hallway there's painted on all the walls are all these ships that fans will recognize from other parts of the story um, that they built and you know this would be the place where you say well what kind of ship do you want these are ones that we've built before and you know um, and uh, and to give it a real one piece feel, we carved these two wonderful, the two wonderful penguins at the bottom of the staircase, you know, which uh, is iconic to uh, to one piece. Sorry about the mess. We shot all of the Kaya's stuff uh, on inside a mansion that had been uh, sort of uh, been built, but abandoned and there was nothing inside. It was all just sort of a concrete shell. So it was kind of a, a playground. Um, and we couldn't find a room to put the kitchen in and the kitchen had some really important scenes and so it needed some scale and everything and i walked back around and there were, but there was an indoor swimming pool in there that was surrounded by columns and i was walking around it and i thought oh maybe we could put the swimming the put the kitchen in the swimming pool and it would be like a split level kitchen and so i started imagining this thing and, and i got an illustration of it done and it just made the most fantastic kitchen and also just perfect for all the action that happened in there. I think, but I mean, Baratier is one of my, um, it's one of my favorite sets in the show. I think because it's so uniquely One Piece, um, uh, you know, like the, this, this wonderful, uh, it's a restaurant, it's made of ships and everything, and it's got this fish head on the front. It's that perfect blend of um, the 18th century pirate world. And then all this sort of wonderful um, kind of fantasy but, you know, but that is very specific. I think this place is a restaurant. And I know what we're going to do next. Oda gave clues to, you know, where, the, uh, how uh, settings had evolved. There's the wonderful book which shows all of the uh, the settings and the, inspira the inspiration for all the settings that he's got in One Piece. And I, so I did look up you know, for Baratier. And uh, he had seen a picture of a restaurant in Vietnam that has got, is a floating restaurant. It's a, it's a modern ship and it's got this big fish head on the front of it. And so I looked at that and I, th you know, and then it got me thinking how Zeph would have come up with this restaurant. And so the story I told myself is Zeph was a pirate. He now wanted to be a restaurateur. All he had was his ship. It's one thing to have a dream. It's another to go after it. And he realized that he needed more room. So, you know, he needed room for offices. He needed room to be able to, for, for rooms for his staff and all kinds of things. So he went to the local pirate, uh, you know, um, uh, the pirate scrapyard and he bought a couple more pirate galleons and he stuck those on top. Um, and then, uh, and on his way out, there was a, a giant fish head that was there. Um, and so he bought that as well. And he put the whole thing together to create Baratier. That fish better have a bar. It was also a set that sort of kept giving to us as well. We loved the exterior of it so much that we wanted to play more scenes outside so you could really see it. Um, and that's what gave me the idea of putting the dorsal bar inside the fish mouth. Um, instead of inside the ship as we originally had it. Um, and it made just the most wonderfully unique bar. In the manga, you know, you kind of see this place and it's the, it, the, that um, where they hang out, they play games, uh, they're, you know, they do gambling and all kinds of things. And there was something about, there was something about the 
the quality of the characters in it all, where it almost felt like the, they were at a kind of carnival. And you know the way a carnival can be like a lot of fun and then suddenly can turn sinister in the way that like in horror movies, they do it all the time. So, you know, at a carnival, you start off and it's like, oh, this is so much fun. And then, you know, the horror begins. And I think Arlong, you know, uh, Arlong was like that, that where it's like, oh, it was really fun to hang out. And then suddenly for Nami, it's like he actually is a, a huge tyrant. So the carnival thing kind of came up fairly early for me as um, just an idea of uh, a kind of symbol of Arlong's character. You know, Arlong hates to wait. So the story I told with Arlong is uh, that actually he raided uh, a carnival, uh, you know, a while back. He stole everything from the carnival. He brought it back to, you know, to his base with, uh, when, because when he, you know, in the One Piece lore, he finds this island and he, you know, and he uh, suppresses the people where, um, which is, you know, Nami's home island. And um, so I figured he kind of moved into a temple there and set up his carnival so that they could kind of party in it. We had to find a location for this. And so I briefed in the location manager and I said, well, you know, what we need to do is we need to find a, a huge kidney shaped swimming pool, but it has to be in the middle of a woods and with no buildings around like this. And we were, you know, and, and, and we were laughing because it's like, well, who's ever going to find a location like that, you know? And then the location manager said, but you know what? I might just have that location. And then she took me to uh, to this place that was just a, like a, about an hour outside of Cape Town. And uh, we drove around the corner and there in a clearing of the woods was this old kidney shaped swimming pool with no buildings around. And it was completely surrounded by forest. It was like, I can't believe you, you've shown me this place. <laughs> so, uh, so that was kind of made for us. What is this place? You know, Arlong's map room, the most important thing with it is it had to look like, um, it had to look like a prison because Nami is kept prisoner in there by Arlong and, you know, drawing all these maps. And so that's why the, the interior of it, I built in stone and it had all these shark's heads sticking out. Um, you know, I kind of, I, I took stuff from the manga um, and then, you know, which I kind of reused. So, you know, Arlong has got these sharks like on top of roofs and stuff. So I took those sharks head and put them inside the thing. So it's kind of this uh, feeling that, you know, Nami's in this room, it's completely circular. So there's nowhere she can hide. There's no corners to go and hide in. Um, and, you know, there are sharks heads overlooking her. She's constantly being watched and everything. Um, but it also made for a very great, a, a fantastic space for that big fight between uh, Luffy and Arlong um, at the end of those, uh, at the end of those episodes. Get out of here, Nami. But Luffy. Just go, I got this. It had to be, very tall as well because it's where luffy shows off his you know rubber punch and brings the whole pagoda down it couldn't just be any sort of ordinary room um and because um, nami's been making maps for years and years i thought also it was something of a library so although it was kind of stone and like a prison it had it also is a library for, for you know um, all the maps of the east blue that she's been making for for Arlong.